Welcome to this video. It's Matt again. This is episode number two in our quest for the perfect burger. If you didn't see episode one, we'll link it up in the corner, this corner, that corner. I don't know where it goes, uh, but you can see episode one where we dove into a simple burger into the McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. So I've had a bit of time to think about what was good about the burger and what wasn't good and what we can improve on. This burger was okay. It's a good starting point, but there's lots of places where we can get better. And I think one of the best places for us to get started is the bun. I think one of the best places for us to get started is to jump on the internet and see if we can learn a little bit about bread making. I don't know all that much about bread making, but if I go on the World Wide Web, I'm pretty sure I can find out some of the keys to making a really great bun. So let's get started. It seems there are basically two schools of thought when it comes to bun making or I guess bun making for hamburgers. There's the, what I view as the traditional style of bun. It's that bun that we made last time, the, the brioche style hamburger bun style with the sesame seeds on top. Sort of what I'm, what I'm used to. And I thought that was the direction we were gonna go down. But as I Googled a bit more, it seems like there's a whole nother school of thought, a whole different type of bun that while similar has some very different characteristics and that's a potato bun. I think in this episode for us to really find the perfect burger, we're gonna to have to make two different types of buns. We're gonna to have to make the brioche style bun and we're gonna to have to make the potato bun. So let's get to work. All right, let's start making our buns. We're gonna start with a bit of fresh yeast. In fact, let's take a second and talk about yeast. Yeast is essential to the bread making process. They're alive, they're little funguses that eat the sugar and flour and basically some chemical reaction happens, turns stuff into carbon dioxide, which gets you that leavening in bread. We could do a whole series on, and we might do a whole series on bread making, but let's talk about just the basics of what you need to know for making buns at home. Here we have two different kinds of yeast, but they're essentially the same thing. Let's start with this one. This is fresh yeast. This only lasts a couple of weeks. Remember, these things are alive, so if they sit in your fridge too long, basically they're going to die. You can check to see if it's still alive by adding a little bit of sugar. It will tell you that, okay, these yeasts are alive. It's really good to do that to check to make sure your yeast is alive because you don't want to go through all this huge, massive bread making process and then basically not have your yeast alive. You know, this is good if you're making a lot of bread. I think there's probably some taste things here. Like you can smell right away. It smells really yeasty. It smells really delicious. Typical yeast or the teas that I use a lot is dried yeast. And basically that's just taking this and drying it, freeze drying it, I believe. Two main different types. This is instant yeast or bread maker's yeast, which basically doesn't need to be activated. You don't need to add sugar to basically wake up these little yeasts. The other kind is what's called active dry yeast. And this was probably what I was more familiar with. Active dry yeast, as you can imagine, is the same as this, except it needs to be activated. To activate the yeast, same way that you test to see if the yeast is still alive. Put it in some water, add a bit of sugar, or you know a sugar substitute, Wait about 10 minutes, it should bubble a little bit, and then you can tell your yeasts are alive. But that is a very, very basic introduction to yeast. So let's get back into bun making. No, I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Okay, so for this recipe, I'm going to use fresh yeast. I'm gonna put this in a little bit of warm milk to basically make sure it's still active. And I'm just gonna crumble my fresh yeast into the milk. and lightly whisk everything to combine. I'm gonna set this aside for about 10 minutes. While that's resting for about 10 minutes, let's head over to our stove. So over on my stove, we're gonna make a really quick roux. In here, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of bread flour and six tablespoons of water and six. Turn on medium heat or so and whisk until it gets really thick. It'll happen pretty quick. 
All right, once it's nice and thick, let's set this aside to cool down slightly and we can start making our dough. So we'll start with our dry ingredients using bread flour to get started. Pinch of salt, a little bit more, and a little bit of white sugar. Lightly combine these and set up my mixer. Add my dry ingredients and start running this on the lowest speed. Slowly add in my milk and yeast. Here I have one whole egg and one egg yolk. And the roux that I made on the stove a second ago. We're gonna let this mix for about two to five minutes. Start it up. three minutes, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of softened butter, one tablespoon at a time. One tablespoon. And a second tablespoon. Mix this again for about another two to three minutes. So after about another three minutes or so of mixing, we've got a very sticky dough that is basically ready. So now I need a very large bowl. I'll lightly grease it with a bit of uh, sunflower oil. Add my dough. I'm gonna cover this with a bit of plastic wrap. And I'm gonna set this aside in a warm place for an hour and a half to two hours. A few minutes later, all right, so it's been about an hour and a half and our dough has easily doubled in size. So we need to punch the gas out of this, which is probably the most satisfying part of this whole process. Lightly flour our cutting board and our hands and our dough goes onto the board. All right, so I'm gonna cut this one into about 100 gram pieces and we'll form them into balls. All right, so I have my six balls of dough. We're gonna form these into as perfect as balls as we can and let them proof for a bit. So the easiest way to do that is basically fold the dough onto itself a few times each direction and then seam side against the board. Just basically use your pinky fingers to push it into a ball. Your hands don't leave the board and you basically pinch the dough together. All right, you should end up with a ball that looks something like this. We'll set this aside and do the rest of our dough. This is lit. So I've got my six uh, buns or buns to be here. I'm gonna take a second baking dish here and basically put this on over top. And we're gonna let these proof here now for about 45 minutes. So after proofing for about 45 minutes, these are our buns. I'm gonna brush them with a bit of egg wash and sprinkle them with some sesame seeds and then they're going into the oven. These are ready for a 200 Celsius, 400 Fahrenheit oven for about 15 minutes. And six minutes later, our buns are done. These, these smell incredible. Um, obviously they look really great. They're nice and golden brown. These are really, really big. I think this is gonna make a really big burger. But because these are the brioche sort of style of hamburger buns, I'm gonna do something a little decadent and brush them with a little melted butter to really take them to the next level. All right, let's set these aside while we do our second bun, our potato bun. 
So our second bun uses a good old fashioned potato. I'm gonna peel this down and we're gonna turn it basically into mashed potatoes to get started. I'm just gonna cut this into slices so that it cooks a little quicker. And we'll take this over to some boiling water. So I've got a bit of salted boiling water here. I'm just gonna add my potato into the water. Lid goes on. Turn down my heat just a little bit so it's simmering. These are gonna take 12 minutes, I think, maybe 15. I'll check them after 12 to see if they're uh, finished. A few minutes later. Let's give it a check. What you're looking for is the knife to go in with very, very little resistance. These look pretty good. So I'm gonna drain these, but before I do, I'm going to save some of this uh, water. We need it to make our doughs to really amp up the potato flavor. So don't just put all this down the drain. I'm going to use my food mill to get a really fluffy mashed potato here. If you don't have one of these, they're pretty cheap. They're really valuable in the kitchen. Basically my potatoes just go in here. We'll give it a turn and out the other end will be um, some pretty delicious potatoes. have our potato. Now we can set this aside and start making our dough. So we're ready to start making our dough again. Bread flour to start off with, white sugar, pinch of salt, and this time we're going to use instant yeast so it can go right in. Uh, no need to activate it. And I'm going to lightly whisk this to combine everything. All right, let's set up our mixer again. Add my dry ingredients. Add in my mashed potatoes. One egg this time. And five tablespoons of the potato water that I reserved. And I'm gonna let this mix for about five minutes. Like before, two tablespoons of butter and two. And we're just gonna give this about another three minutes or so until it's completely absorbed all the butter. All right, so this is mostly pulling away from the sides. It's been going for about eight or nine minutes. We're ready to transfer this to a bowl. So like our last dough, we're gonna lightly grease a large bowl Add our dough, cover with plastic wrap, and we're gonna set this one aside for 45 minutes and see how that compares to the other one. A few minutes later. All right, so we left this one to rise for about 45 minutes. You can see there's enough gas coming out that the, or the plastic wrap sort of has come off a bit. So like before, we'll punch this one down. Flour our cutting board. Our dough comes out. Quickly form it into a ball. Now this one I'm gonna cut down into slightly smaller pieces just so that we can see what that's like and compare it against our larger buns. All right, so that's about 85 grams. I'm gonna do the rest of this. All right, so each of these is about 85 grams. I'm going to roll these out into buns. Since I don't have another baking dish, I'm gonna use a cooking towel, put this over top, and let these rest again for 45 minutes. A few minutes later. So our potato buns have been proofing for about 45 minutes. Let's do the same thing. We're gonna brush these with egg wash, except these I'm not gonna put sesame seeds on, mostly just so I can tell them apart from each other. All right, these are ready for a 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius oven for about 12 minutes. These are a bit smaller, so I'm gonna check them a little earlier than my last buns. All right, and our potato buns are done now. 
I'm not gonna brush these with butter. These I'm just gonna leave like this so we can see what these taste like on their own. I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit and then we'll do a comparison. All right, here are my two different kinds of uh, hamburger buns. We've got our brioche style standard, I guess, uh, hamburger bun here, and then our potato uh, bun here. These are a little smaller. They don't have to be smaller. I just weighed them out to be to be a bit smaller. But, so let's uh, let's give these a try and see what they're like. So this is soft and and light on the inside. Obviously, I can smell the butter from here. Let's give it a taste. Oh wow, that's really good. Um, you know, obviously really, really buttery. You know, you can taste the sesame seeds, but you know, the bun is incredibly soft. You know, and really tasty. The bun I tried in uh, episode one was, uh, you know, I felt kind of stale, um, both the McDonald's one and the, um, the store-bought one, but this is, this is awesome. And so I can see already how, like, how incredibly soft this is. That's what people said when I was doing my research that the the softness of this bun, and we'll see in a second, the sweetness is what really sets it apart. Really good, De you know, definitely, you can tell that sort of softer texture from the potato is in there. Um, it's, it's, I guess, maybe a little bit sweet. I don't find it really that sweet at all, um, but you can tell it's made out of potatoes compared to the other one that was just made out of, made out of flour. Um, these are both really, really good. Thanks for joining us in today's episode where we dove into our buns. We'll see you next time in episode three of our quest to find the perfect burger. See you next time. These are a million times better than yesterday. You know, I can see why this is gonna make such a difference in our burger.